following is a class on the Bhagavad Gita as it is. Fourth chapter, text number 11, given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded on the 28th of July, 1966, in New York, New York. Jeevathamaṁ prapadvante tāṁ sathaiva bhajāmi aham mamo bhatmānu vattante manushyā pāṭha sarvasā This sloka, this bhat, we discussed last Friday evening and I tried to explain the supreme leadership of the Supreme Lord. By nature, we are destined to follow a leadership. Nobody is independent. Even in the animal society, the animals, they have also got a group, and there is leader of the group. But as you know it, so in every group, we are trying to make some group according to the similarity of thoughts and propensities. There are associations, you know, various associations, mercantile association, bankers association, lawyers association, and there is a leader. So that is the nature's way. Now, the supreme leader is Sri Krishna. That we do not know. Supreme leader, the leadership is accepted. But we do not know that the supreme leader is the supreme lord or Krishna. So that is informed in the Vedic literature and in the Bhagavad Gita also, the same thing is confirmed that Jidhaman Prapadnante. Now Everyone is under my leadership. Everyone. There is no exception. Especially he mentions the manusha. Manusha means the human being. The human being is specially mentioned here because amongst all the human beings in this lower status of our existence, the human being is considered the highest perfectional stage of living condition. And especially human being has the prerogative to understand the supreme leadership of Sri Krishna. The animals cannot understand this. All the persons who are up in the animal nature just like you will find in the same chapter of Bhagavad Gita, the Lord says, Namam Vishitana Mudha Prapadvante Naradhama Mahaya Apurita Gyana Asri Bhavama Sutaha. Those who are always engaged in mischievous activities, those who are fools, those who are lowest of the mankind and those whose knowledge has been diluted by the external energy, they do not make their surrender unto the Supreme Lord. But uh, there are other persons who are virtuous. They are considered that Arto Atharthi Jigyasu, Jaini Chavaratansa. There are other persons who are distressed and in need of some wealth or inquisitive or really research worker in the field of understanding what is the absolute truth. And this morning we are discussing in the morning class that the person who are research scholar in the matter of 
understand the nature of Krishna, transcendental nature of Krishna. He is called Jnani, a philosopher, and he is accepted with bhakti, with devotional service. He is accepted as special uh, for the attention of the Supreme Lord. Now, everyone, therefore everyone is following the leadership or the representative of the leadership. Now, you will find in the Bhagavad Gita when there is some specific qualification of a person, just like political leader or some spiritual leader, leader there must be. So, suppose the political leader or religious leader is there and thousands of people are following him. So that is confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita that they are invested with certain power of Sri Krishna. Yajyat Bhuti Matsatya Pamo Tejansa Sambhava. So everyone is following directly or indirectly the Supreme Leadership of Krishna. At the perfectional stage of accepting that leadership is when we accept Sri Krishna as our direct leader. We are going to that path gradually, going to that path gradually, but in the middle we are hampered because there is want of sufficient knowledge. When sufficient knowledge is there, it is found in the Bhagavad Gita. Bahunam Janmanamante Janmanam Prabhupada. After many, many births, when one is developed in his real consciousness, he can understand what, what he understands. Vasudeva Sarvamiti, Samhatma Sudhulla, that Krishna. He is the Supreme. He is all in all. So I have to surrender unto Him. That is the perfection of knowledge. These days one has to reach. Never mind whether he is following a principle of philosophical research, whether he is following a yogi principle, or whether he is following and, and, and the philanthropic war or political leadership and so many things are going on, but the whole thing is targeted for Krishna. How it is targeted? That is explained. I can try to explain. Now, the whole material world is working under two energies, the lower energy and the higher energy. And the, both of the energies, they have got different dimensions. Just like in this atomic age, you know the material energy ends in the atomic force. Atom, paraman. Similarly, this is this material energy is called lower energy. And there is another energy which is called spiritual energy. The both the energies they are emanating from the Supreme Law. In the Vedanta Sutra also it is confirmed. Janma Dasyagataha. All energies that are coming, emanating from the Supreme. Ah. In the Bhagavad Gita also you will find the same thing confirmed. Aham Sarvasta Prabhava. Matta Sarvam Pravattati. I am the fountain head, Lord Sri Krishna said. I am the fountain head of everything. So now to understand how everything is easy, the two energies are working in this world, in our experience. One is superior energy or the higher energy and the other is the inferior energy. The inferior energy is matter. 
and the superior or the higher energy is the spirit soul. So as you find you have got now we have no experience. Scientific advancement of knowledge so far we have in this material world that is bounded within the area of material energy. They have not succeeded in finding out the spiritual energy. Otherwise they would have given life to the dead man. That has not been possible. Suppose a man is dead. What is that death? That means separation of two energies, the material energy and the spiritual energy. That is death. The supreme spiritual energy and the atomic part of it, as it is stated in the Bhagavad Gita, Mami Vamsa Jiva Bhuta. Just you have experience in this atomic age, the minute quantity of atomic and atomic material existence. Similarly, there is spiritual atomic existence. Now this spiritual atomic existence, ah, the other day I explained and several times that atom is also described in the Padma Pura Vedic literature. And what is the form of that spiritual energy? I mean to say atom, spiritual atom. It is 10,000 part of the upper portion of the hair. You have got experience up to the upper portion of the hair. It's just a little point. Now divide it into 10,000 parts. And the, that one part is yourself, spiritual atom. This is our position. And that spiritual energy is so powerful that we, from that one ten thousand part of the upper portion of the hair, it is not manufactured. So far, what I am speaking to you, it is from authentic shastras. The original verse is that Kesadra Satavasra Satadha Kalpita Sacha. Jiva, Bhava, Savigya, Sa Anantaya Kalpate. The exact verse is in Sanskrit that Jiva, the living entities, they are Ananta. Ananta means there is no limit how many there are. Ananta. Unlimited. Unlimited. Well, as small, just like in the material world also, you will find unlimited atomic existence. Similarly, in the spiritual also there are unlimited uh, spiritual atoms. And one of the atoms is myself and yourself, or the ant, or the elephant, everyone is containing that atomic portion of spiritual energy. And from that atomic spiritual energy develops this material body. From that spiritual, the matter cannot develop. Matter cannot develop. Yet you have got experience. A dead body does not develop. A living body develops. A child, when it comes out of the mother's home, if the child is dead, oh, there is no further development. However, you can keep the child in a very antiseptic way. Is a law. There is no law. Therefore, it is concluded that the supreme spirit, Krishna, from him everything has come out. Everything has come out. Any stage you take, oh, that is Krishna. And wherever I surrender, because my position is to surrender. I am spiritual, that atom. However, big body I can develop. I can develop the body like an elephant, but the elephant is conducted under the direction of a man, you know. Such a big animal is controlled by a small boy of human being. So everyone is under control. We cannot deny that. 
So we have to, we are under control of different uh, dimension of that spiritual energy covered by material energy. That is, the real control is from Krishna. That we have to understand. Either we follow this path or that path. Now suppose there are impersonalists who uh, believe in the ultimate and to say merging into the supreme effulgence, Brahma Jyoti. And what is that Brahma Jyoti? Brahma Jyoti is just the atomic spiritual combination of atomic spiritual forces. That is Brahma Jyoti. Just like the sun ray, those who are scientists, those who know what is the sun ray, the sun ray is a small molecule of anti-grazing atoms. The sun ray. You have got experience of sun ray, but what are we? What, what is the sun ray? It is not a homogeneous, it is heterogeneous. When you can analyze the sun ray, you will find a small particles of molecules. Similarly, Brahma Jyoti is also a spiritual, spiritual atoms combined together, just like the sun ray, different material molecules combined together. Similarly, Brahma Jyoti is also like that. Now, as in the sun ray, there are different planets. They are also generated from the sun ray. Similarly, from the Brahma Jyoti, there are different planets. But these, those planets you cannot see here. That is beyond this star. So, in that um, planets uh, and the spiritual planets, uh, there are different forms of God, Krishna. That is described in the Brahma Sangita. Addaita, Achyuta, Anadi, Ananta, Rupam, Adyam, Purana, Purusam, Navajo, Vanancha, Bedeshu, Dillava, Adu, Lavaya, Pabhakto, Govindam, Adi, Purusam, Tamaham, Vayami. Just like Krishna has expanded himself with this molecular and the atomic portion of this uh, living entity. Similarly, he has got many other expansions as Vishnu. So that's a nice subject matter. So in every way, this is a subject matter for studying, scrutinizing, studying Krishna science. Krishna science is a great science. Therefore Krishna has said just in the beginning of this chapter, Janmakarma Medidva, Jijana Dhitapata, Yobe Tittapata. Anyone who understands Krishna scientifically, what he is, what, how he is working, how his energies are acting, these things are to be known. And one simply knows this science. And what happens? Oh, Tattva Adeham Punat Janmanaiti Mami Titam. Simply by knowing this science. Oh, he becomes liberated soul. He becomes liberated soul. And what is the position of liberated soul? Liberated soul, Taptadi Hankunat Janmanaiti, Mame. That person who is liberated simply by knowing the transcendental nature of Krishna, he is liberated and he at once transferred to the spiritual sky into that planet, which I understand. Boycott the planet. There is only one who will boycott the planet, and each and every planet, Krishna is there in different Narayana form. So this is the opportunity in the human life to understand this. We are submitting to different energies of Krishna, but if we directly submit ourselves to Krishna, what he, Krishna, what he is, 
that is not very difficult to know because Krishna comes in this material world and displays his real nature. Anuddhaha hai manushyana in Bhagavad. Just to inform the human society that if, if you have no knowledge of Krishna, just see, I am incarnated. How I am doing? You can see, you can have. Just like something extraordinary happening in India and if there is some uh, photograph, cinematograph, cinematograph, and you see in the picture, by storm, cinema, you see the actual what is happening. But Krishna, that time is not like that. That time, originally, the incident which is happening in India, you have got a photograph, you see in cinema. This cinema picture is a shadow of the actual picture. But when Krishna comes, because he is absolute, the same picture which is in the spiritual world, the same picture is represented here. There is no difference. Abdaita Yachita Yanadi Ananta Rupam Adyang Purana Purisang Navajovanancha. Krishna is described as Navajova. We hope one, some of you must have seen the picture of Krishna. He is all as just like a boy of twenty years old. Although he is the Adipurus. Adipurus means he is the original person of all emanation. He is the oldest. Advaita Achyata Anadi. Adyam Purana Purana Purusha means the oldest. Purana means old. Purana Purusha is still Navajuvanancha. Just like a young man of twenty years old, full energy, full youthfulness. This is the science of Krishna. So simply by knowing this science of Krishna, if we can get liberation from these material miseries of life, why should we not try for this? Let us try for Krishna consciousness. Uh, it is a very nice subject matter and very easy. We are just trying to provide this Krishna consciousness. We don't ask you to have some troublesome or laborsome gymnastic law, no. you simply come and hear. And this hearing, ah, it is followed by nice music and singing. Beginning with music, ending with music. Ah, everyone will like it. And we have no means, of course, Whatever means I have got, I am distributing little throw. But the process is Lord Chaitanya who introduced this process. After this termination of this performance of chanting and reciting, of distribution of prasadam, nice palatable dishes for eating. The Bhagavad Gita says, Susurkham, this is a process is very palatable and very pleasurable and very easy. And still to get Krishna, always is the easiest and most pleasurable and happy mood, is still you get the Supreme. And you don't require any qualification. You doesn't require that you have to become a great learned scholar. No. Simply by the gift of Krishna you have got these two years. If you simply give oral reception to these transcendental words, that is sufficient. It does not require any extraneous education that you have to pass an examination or DSC or PhD or something like that. No. So why should you not take advantage? Tatam Prasanga Mamaji Jatham Vida Krishna says in Bhagavad Tatam Prasanga Mamaji Jatham Vida Bhavanti Vittarna Rathana Katha If we actually take advantage of association 
a realized person and if you hear from them, then the result is that it becomes very pleasing to the heart and the ear. Satam prasana. Satu asatam. One must be realized so in describing the science of Krishna. Then the result will be that the audience will feel that it is very nice to hear and it is appealing to the heart. Satam prasangat mamadhidya sangida bhavanti ritkarna. Rit means heart. Karna means yeah. Ritkarna rasayana. Very pleased. Now, we have received this news very pleasing. Now, next duty, tadjo sanat. Now, if you little try to assimilate it, and what is that assimilation? Smaranam, simply by thinking, oh, this has been spoken. Try to argue oh, whether it is true or not. So, you have to think of it. Satam prasangarno, tadjo sanat, asu, ahumar gavatmani, and if you do that, Suppose you hear something of the Bhagavad Gita and it appeals to you or even does not appeal to you. Just try to think over what Bhagavad Gita says, how Samadhi has discussed this matter. Apply your arguments. Apply your logic. Don't take it as a sentiment or as in a blind say. You have got reason, you have got argument, you have got sense. Apply it. And try to understand. Neither it is bogus, it is scientific. Then you feel that you sanatasu apavadva vatmani sadha bhakti rati ranikramishati. You gradually develop your attachment for hearing it. And devotional service will be involved in your heart and then gradually will make progress. But one thing it is stated in the Bhagavad Gita. Once you begin, even one percent you can realize that is never be lost. That is, that will remain a permanent settlement. Now suppose if you are, you are trying for the examination or you pass your B.A. examination, now, with the end of this body, that your qualification has graduated of Columbia University or any university, is finished. Now your life begins in another body, and you have to acquire knowledge again to become qualified, to graduate. But this knowledge is not like that, because it is spiritual knowledge, absolute knowledge. It goes with you, your spirit. That is find explanation. Oh. And another chance is that one who tries to assimilate this knowledge, even if he is not I mean, to a perfect, so there is no harm. Because whatever he has learned, that remains an attempt. And you get another chance of human body to begin from where you have ended in this life. Yoga Bhrasta. Sujinam Simatam Yehe Yoga Bhrasta Sanyayate. You will find in the Bhagavad Gita. Sujinam and Simatam. Sujinam means purified family. Just like in India, we have got the ideal purified family, a brahman. Of course, nowadays, uh, due to material advance of civilization, everything is polluted. But according to, still there are some families, very purified. If you go to their house, at once you feel, oh, it is a place, fully purified. So suchina, suchina means in the family of that purified brother. And simatang, simatang means in the family of rich man. Why these two chances are given? Because in the family of a pure cultural family, you get the chance of regenerating your lost and spiritual consciousness which was unfinished in your last life. 
that you get charged. And the rich man family, you get charged because you haven't got to bother yourself how to maintain your body and soul together. The rich man get the opportunity that they haven't got to think over much about the maintenance of the body and soul together. Ordinary man, uh, they have to seek how to earn the bread. Problem of bread is there. And for a rich man, there is no such problem. He can advance in culture. He has the opportunity. Uh, but unfortunately, a rich man's sons are misguided. Uh, they uh, get some money without earning and they spend like anything for sense value. But he should know, oh, I got this opportunity by the grace of Krishna. Now, let me peacefully advance myself in the science of Krishna. These opportunities are offered by Krishna, but we miss you. It's still better. We, sh- we should not wait for the chance of another birth. We should take the opportunity in this birth. Just that Krishna prescribes here yeah, that simply by knowing the transcendental nature of Krishna and his transcendental activities, one can get divine. Why don't you do that? Why should you wait for another birth, either in the rich man's family or in the pure family of the Brahmin? Because it is not exactly sure that because a, a person is born in the family of a pure Brahmin, he is elevating spiritually now. Sometimes we see that he is degrading because he is misusing or by bad association the parents is not training. So we should not miss this opportunity of human life and follow this instruction that Janma Kannam me Dibba Jo Beti Tattata Anyone who simply understands the transcendental nature of Krishna, he becomes a liberated person. This opportunity is success. And Jira Thaman Prabhadanti Tang Sutriya Bhajam Maha. We are already under the control of some leadership. That is a fact. Why should we not take exactly directly the leadership of Krishna? This is the part. If you have got any doubt that uh, why should I take the leadership of Krishna? The answer is there in the Bhagavad Gita. This is the real study of Bhagavad Gita. In the Bhagavad Gita, the Lord says that, Arjuna, you are my dear friend. Therefore, although I have explained all the uh, different branches of, I mean to say, spiritual uh, cultivation, but the most confidential thing, just I am telling you, because you are my very dear friend, just give up everything and just be surrendered unto me. I shall give you all things. So instead of accepting so many infidel or imperfect leadership, let us accept the leadership of Krishna and make our life perfect. That is the whole philosophy. Now in the next sloka, the Lord says, Kankanta karmana siddhim jajanta ihadevata shipranghi manuse loke siddhi bhavati karmaya. Now, I accept some, a particular class of leader because I belong to that uh, status of idea. So therefore, you know that uh, in the Vedic literature, there are names of many demigods. Sometimes uh, the Hindus are criticized that uh, Hindus have got many gods, but they are not. I mean, to the Supreme God, if somebody is a serious student of the Upanishad, they will find that. The demigods described, they are all, I mean to say, um, servants of the Supreme Lord, Krishna. 
But here it is said, Kamkanta Karmanan Siddhi. Sometimes we want something immediately by worshipping this demigod. Just like it is mentioned that if he wants, if one aims to, wants to be free from diseases, he has to worship the sun god. If one has to become very beautiful or he wants a beautiful wife, then he has to worship Uma. Similarly, there are different gods' names in the basic literature there are different, and they become successful. That is not hundred by worshipping those different daily gods for particular purpose, they become successful. Ah, that is a fact. But in another, another place, in find in the Bhagavad Gita, that it is said, kāma śrāste hitagyāna jajante iha devata. Kāma śrāste hitagyāna. Those who are misguided by material desires, they take the shelter of other demigods. One goes to the worship of demigods because one is persuaded for a particular purpose. Just like one who wants to be very healthy man or to be free from all diseases, he worships the sun god. Or one who wants to be to have a beautiful wife or become himself a very beautiful he wants he worships the Devi, Uma. But one he is convinced, one who is convinced that I am not this body. This is the thing. I am not this body. The material words means bodily demands. Then he does not go to all the demigods. He takes at once shelter of the Supreme Lord. Jnanava, Jnanaman who has understood the problems of life. Jnanava, Jnana means who has understood the spiritual nature of the living being. He is called Jnanava. So, so Jnanava, Bhavanam Janmalayamte Jnanavan Maan Prabhadyate, one who has become really learned, even after many, many births, and knows that I am not this body, I am spirit, my nature, my advancement, my happiness is depending on the advancement of my spiritual life. Such a person only can take center of Krishna and perfectly. Others, of course, as it is said, that those who are distressed or those who are in need of some wealth, they also go to worship Krishna, but for some temporary relief. But the benefit is that in such persons go to Krishna, worship, for some temporary relief, but the benefit is that because he has gone to Krishna, therefore at the ultimate end he will be devoid of all this material desire and will uh, absolutely take shelter of Krishna. There are many instances of that type, of that type. Just like Dhruva Maharaj, Dhruva Maharaj, he went to worship Krishna uh, just to have he, the property of his father. That's a long story. The property of his father. And uh, his father has two wives. And the and Guru Maharaj, mother, Guru Maharaj's mother was neglected by the king. So he was going to be direct of the father's property. So he wanted father's property. He went to uh, in the forest to ask Krishna just to ask him, give me my father's property. That there was a desire. But he is glad to understand. And Guru Maharaj, after finishing his tapasya, a penance, when he saw Krishna, when Krishna appeared before him as Vishnu, my dear boy, now whatever you want you can ask, I shall give you. Now he says, Oh, my Lord, I don't want anything anymore. Uh, this night there, there is a verse 
स्वामी उठिकार हो उसमी परम न जाचे माई डियर लॉर्ड आई एम सो सेटिस्फाइड दैट आई हैव नो डिजायर टू आस्क यू वाई थाना विलासी तपुष स्थित हो हम आई केम टू एक्सेप्ट दिस सीरियस टाइप ऑफ पैनल जस्ट टू एक्वायर द लैंड ऑफ माई फार और जस्ट डिजायरिंग द पोजिशन ऑफ यू एकर्स ऑफ लैंड और एनी बट आई हैव सीन यू हु आर यू देव मुनिंद्र गुईम हु इज नेवर सीन इविन माई डी ए ग्रेट डेमी गॉड्स और ग्रेट सेजेस और ग्रेट मैन बाई मेनी इयर्स मैन एंड दैट फॉर माई प्रॉफिट इज दट आई केम टू सर्च आउट सम पार्टिकल्स ऑफ ग्लास ब्रोकन ग्लास एंड आई हैव गॉट विथ डायमंड सो वट आई हैव गॉट टू आस्क यू आई हैव नाउ सेटिस्फाइड the reality is that even what is in need of money or he is in distress as we find in the seven chapter the chaturvira bhajante ma sukhita na arjuna so even if you have some desire within yourself so the bhagavad gita says in spite of having that desire you can worship krishna and ask so that in future Your desires will be desireless. You will not ask any, because that is pure divorce. So we have to say, just like Gani, Gani he does not desire anything to test in extreme, but he simply wants to know Krishna. What is my relation with Krishna? This is called Gani. He has no other desire. Therefore, the echo of bhakti visishta the Gani has been realized. So if I am not Gani, if I am a needy person. If I take to Krishna and ask him, that process is also recommended. Because ultimately, when I shall be purified, I shall know my real nature. Then I shall say, like Guru Maharaj, "Sorry, in Kitha to me, Baram na jaise, my dear Lord, I am fully satisfied. I don't want anything." Because spiritual consciousness. Krishna consciousness is so bright, so illuminated, and so valuable that in the presence of such consciousness, you directly deny to have any valuable things of this material world. So we have to attain to that state. That is the real aim of life. And Lord Krishna personally is teaching in the Bhagavad Gita. Why should we not take advantage of this? We should not refuse. If we refuse, we can refuse because we are individual souls with independence. If we like, we can refuse, but we should not refuse. Here, Krishna says that those who does not come to my leadership, but he goes indirectly to other leaders. We watch the leadership why? Because we want something from that leaders, just like in our in India during the um, I mean the independence movement, uh, so many people took part in the Congress movement, and later on uh, they become all ministers and and high officials, although they had no position uh, in in their um, past life. So. It is possible that if we worship other than God, we can get some temporary relief from our despair. But if we take to Krishna, then the relief is permanent. And tapta dehang punarjanma neeti mami says we can give up this body and go directly to the spiritual kingdom to be associated with Krishna. Here Krishna says, "Tam tam tam karmana siddhim jagam tayera." People are deluded for temporary relief, and therefore they go to worship and demi gods. They get some immediate relief. That is their problem. But kipra kipra ni manusro ke siddhi bhavati karma da. If you want some temporary relief, then you can worship this or that. But if you want really The ultimate relief, 
and that is the goal of human life. Ultimately, everyone is trying to get out of misery. The whole struggle, either in the material field or in the spiritual field, the whole struggle is to get out of some misery. So, a, a, a perfect man or a very intelligent man, he should try to have the mm, highest benefit of this life, and that is surrendering unto Krishna. That is surrendering unto Krishna. If we do that, then we are both materially and spiritually benefited. We find in the later sloka that Tetham Satat Yuktanam Bhajatam Kritam the exact what I forget now, it is said that those who are engaged in Krishna consciousness, Krishna says, I supply them all that he needs. He hasn't got to ask anybody. He, Krishna knows, just like the father knows what is the necessity of his child who is depending fully on the father. The father may neglect of the grown-up children who is looking after his own business, but the child who is completely dependent on father and mother, the father and mother takes care. Similarly, uh, Bhagavad Gita, uh, Krishna says, yoga khemam bahamaham, anyone who is fully in Krishna consciousness, without any consideration, then everything is taken care of by Krishna. This assurance is given. If you don't believe in that assurance, if you don't believe in Krishna, that is a different thing. But so far Bhagavad Gita is concerned, uh, if we become fully Krishna consciousness, then our ultimate solution of all problems will be solved. That is a fact. Now, if you have got any question, you can ask. Uh, atomic, uh, atom, um, consistency of matter, have you got experience? No, at least you have heard that there is atom. As in the matter there is atom, simply spirit there is atom. It is simply, uh, now, both the beginning from the supreme down to the atom, these they are, they are expansion of different energy of Krishna. Either the material atom or the spiritual atom. Now, we are spiritual atoms. We living entities, we are spiritual atoms. And by material atomic combination we have developed this world. Although this material body is foreign to me. Similarly, we can develop our spiritual body also in the spiritual world. Is it clear? Just like in the material world, in combination with matter, we have developed this material body. Do you believe in this, that I am spiritual atom and I have developed this material body on the basis of spiritual atom? It is a fact. It is a fact just like in the mother's home, when the spiritual atom takes place, then it grows, it forms the material body. Without that spiritual atom, there cannot be any growth of body. Simply, sex intercourse does not give guarantee of pregnancy. Unless that spiritual atom is there, if the body does not grow. That is, we get information from operative science. So, the whole material world is also grown up upon the spiritual existence. And our whole problem is that instead of having this material body, we have to get our spiritual body. That is Krishna concept. That is the benefit of Krishna concept. Tatta deham punajjanma naiti mami. Now, one who goes to Krishna, you mean to say one who goes to Krishna, vacant? No. He goes to Krishna with the body. 
Just like Krishna has got body, so you also go before him. Just like you come to me with a body, I go to you with a body. You are a spiritual atom, I am also a spiritual atom. Now I have developed this body, we have developed this body. Our meeting is between these two bodies. Similarly, when you go to Krishna, Madhama, or Krishna's Dhamma, he is the abode, we go there with spiritual body. Yes. Is, uh, does the spiritual world contain uh, spatial relationships? Huh? Is, uh, is, uh, are things bounded by space in the spiritual world? Or is it just space? Yes. Yeah. Yes. That is only spiritual. As you have birth, in material space, similarly there is spiritual space. As you have got material body, similarly you have got spiritual body. What is the difference between spiritual body and spiritual happiness? Yes, because matter is not eternal and spirit is eternal. Matter is full of ignorance and spirit is full of knowledge. Matter is full of unpleasantness and spirit is full of pleasantness. Satsidhananda. That is the difference between matter and spirit. And uh, what's the difference between spiritual atom and eh? spiritual body? Or are they the same thing? No, spiritual atom, just like from the spiritual body, we have developed this material body. Similarly, from the spiritual atom, you can develop your spiritual body. Tattva deham. Tattva deham means that giving up this material body, he develops the spiritual body and this, uh, then goes to the kingdom of God, of Krishna. Tattva deham punat jarma naiti mame. So when he goes to Krishna, he goes in spiritual body. So there is potency of every living being. Just like he has got the potency of developing this material body, similarly he has got the potency of developing spiritual body. Is it any difficulty to understand? Okay. So our problem is that we are suffering all kinds of misery on account of this material body. Now our business should be that we shall be cultured in Krishna consciousness so that in next life will be my spiritual life. Then the solution of all problems solved. And so long we shall get material body repeatedly. Just like we give up this dress and take another dress, similarly we shall continue. Then the four kinds of misery, Janma Mitsu Jarabhyaji, or at least these four kinds of misery, the miseries of birth, the miseries of death, and the miseries of old age and miseries of diseases we have to suffer. And as soon as you get spiritual body, all these miseries over. Because your body is no more subjected to birth and death, disease and old age. Uh, that life is eternal, full of knowledge and blissful. And that you can get simply by studying the and nature of Krishna, transcendental nature of Krishna. So we are hankering after so many things. We are taking the leadership of this leader, that leader, that leader, just to relieve, get relief from our temporary misery. So our duty should be just to get rid of our misery by developing that spiritual body. That should be the aim of and that is possible by Krishna consciousness. Any other question? Your question is whether misery is eternal or not. Eternal force. Eh? Any. No, miseries are not eternal. You can end your misery. But if you want to end miseries materially, that is temporary. If you end your misery spiritually, that is permanent. Just like in this world we are also trying to end our misery. Suppose I am distressed, 
or I am diseased, I go to hospital to end my misery. But that misery is not permanent, and that end of misery is not permanent, temporary. I can get again disease. So long I have got this material body. Uh, that misery can be repeated. That disease can be repeated. But if you get your spiritual body, then there is no more question of misery. Yes. A human part is superior uh, in terms of our self-realization is superior to birth of the God. Eh? Is the human part superior in terms of our self-realization? Is it superior to the birth as a Dhamma God? Yes, demigod is also like you. Just like in the human society, there are difference of bodies. One one body is richer than the other body. One body is happier than the other body in material estimation. Similarly, in the higher planets, there are different bodies who are happier than persons who are living in this material planet, I mean this earthly planet. It is estimated that their standard of living is higher. Just like in this planet, there are different nations and different people, and they have got different standard of living also. Your uh, European and American people, your standard of living better than our Indian people. So far, material consideration is there. You have got very nice uh, toilet room, but uh, in the Indians they go to the field uh, to evacuate. Uh, see. So uh, uh, in that uh, this country is advantageous. So as you find, even in this planet, there are different species of life, different uh, species of humankind, and they have got different standard of living. Similarly, uh, in the higher planet, there are also the um, uh, living entities just like us. They are also like man, but their uh, position is different. Their bodily constitution is different. Their living standard is different. But in spite of different being, they are subjected to the material law, the birth, death, old age, and disease. They are not free from that. Nobody is free within this universe. Anyone, either human being or demigod or animal or anyone, they are subjected to these four principles of misery: birth, death, and old age, and disease. So when you get out of this material world, then you get free from this. Their duration of life may be greater than your duration of life, but death is your. You cannot get rid of death in higher planets. Death is there, sure. The duration of life, just like a man's duration of life, than the duration of the life of a dog is greater, but both are subjected to the principle of death. That one cannot avoid. But if you want to avoid a subjugation under death, then you have to develop your spiritual body, and that is possible by Krishna consciousness. Any other question? Yes. Yeah. Krishna consciousness is not the same. You are individual spirit. You are individual spirit. Are you not? Don't you feel it? Don't you feel your individuality? Yes, you become one in the quality of spirit. You follow? When you... Oh, that... <laughs> that, that, is, that is that information from Bhagavad Gita. There is spiritual body. And why it is difficult to understand? You can understand it that your material body has developed from that atomic existence of spirit. Do you can understand that? Similarly, from that atomic spiritual existence you can develop your spiritual body. What is the difficult? It is the same process. As you have developed your material body, Similarly, you can develop your spiritual body. What is the difficulty in understanding? You are marked in matter. Still you have got your individual existence. What is your body? 
this is matter. Is it not? That you are you not merging matter? Then still you have got an individuality existence. Don't you agree? Similarly, I am a merge in a spiritual existence, but still my individuality will be there. You are merged already in this matter. Just like when you leave this body, your body will transform into us. That means it is already merged. It still has God. Separate existence. And what is that separate existence? Due to that spirit. So even in the matter, if, if the spirit can maintain separate existence, don't you think in the spirit it, can, it cannot maintain its separate existence? Marging means just like aer- aeroplane. Aeroplane is flying in the air, uh, in the sky. When it, be- it goes too far and uh, it becomes too small, you say it has merged into the sky. But it has got, even in that position, it has got its a, 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 a separate existence. Just like a bird, a parrot enters a tree. The tree is also green and the bird is also green. When, when it enters the tree, you see, you know, separate existence of the bird. But it has got a separate existence. Similarly, either you are in material existence, or in spiritual existence. You are already Mars, but you have got your separate existence. Is it clear? Thank you. Now let us ask them. Please.